Let me begin with two quick comments. First of all, do you know the difference between clergy, preacher type people, and you lay folks? Well, the difference is that we're paid to be good, and you all are good for nothing. <laughs> Secondly, you need to understand that I am not my son Dave. Uh, he's caring, capable, confident, creative. He's far better than his old man, and you are fortunate to have him as your pastor, if I might say that. I'm just an old has-been who has to hide behind this pulpit. I don't get out and wander around like he does. And you probably ought to know also that I used to be a who's who, and now I'm a who's he. <laughs> so today is Father's Day. And I suppose it's appropriate for your pastor's father to be your supply preacher today while Dave and his family are away. I just don't understand why he didn't come back to, to hear me while I'm <laughs> up here doing this. Dave was born June the 7th, 1965 in Greensboro. And I was so confident that Diana and I were going to have a son for our firstborn that about a week before he was born, I went out and bought boy birth announcements. Well, that was the last time I was that confident as a father, for I soon learned there was a whole lot more to fatherhood than just guessing correctly, luckily, the, the gender of your child. About all I knew about fatherhood at that time was something that happened uh, before Dave was born. I was on the elevator in Greensboro at Moses Cone Hospital, I had my clerical collar on, and a lady got on the elevator, and she addressed me as father. She thought I was a Catholic priest, I guess. And uh, anyway, I later did become a father. And appropriately, I was serving my first congregation, like Molly is soon to be doing. And believe it or not, the name of my first congregation was the Lutheran Church of Our Father. Isn't that strange? It was in Greensboro. Incidentally, if you were a member here back in the 1970s, you had Pastor Bob Edsel. He followed me at the Lutheran Church of Our Father. And uh, another one of my uh, successors there used to call it Our Father Who Art in Greensboro. <laughs> anyway, my fatherhood then continued with the births of Charlotte and in 1968 and Fran in 1969, but I still lack the confidence that a good father ought to have. I've often said that our three children turned out wonderfully, and indeed they did, but no thanks to me, but to their mother, who was the best mother that any child could ever want to have. And the children would tell you that I was a better pastor, not preacher, but a better pastor than I was a father, but I've tried to make it up to them in more recent years and to their spouses and to our five wonderful grandchildren. Today is Father's Day, and so I want to address primarily our fathers and grandfathers and uncles, other father figures. But my remarks are for all of you here today, women, uh, children, uh, childless people, singles, and my theme is Confidence, confidence. One of our great American aviator pioneers was Eddie Rickenbacker. And listen to what he said about confidence. Confidence is doing what you're afraid to do, and there can be no confidence unless you're scared. Confidence. And St. Paul, in the first verse of today's Second Corinthians text that Patty read, boldly proclaim, so we are always confident. So we are always confident. You know, confidence can manifest itself in many different ways in different kinds of people. The thief who pulls off a bank robbery certainly has to have confidence in what he's doing, although he's using it for a wrong purpose. And then there's Evil Knievel. You remember him? He used to take his motorcycle and he would jump over rows of cars and canyons and, and rivers. Maybe a better name for that uh, other than confidence would be foolhardiness. Another better kind of confidence is that 
of our American servicemen who, uh, in 1945, this month of June, stormed the beaches of Normandy and began the process of, of winning World War II. Or of Martin Luther standing boldly against deadly threats. Or farmers who, year after year, uh, plant the seed, as Carissa, Carissa talked about that, uh, hopefully and expectantly and confidently uh, looking for uh, produce to come. We heard about that in the gospel. Or your forefathers and your foremothers here at St. Mark's Lutheran Church, who way back in 1910 established this wonderful congregation up on East Main Street. Such confidence is truly inspiring. If I could put my sermon today in just a sentence, it would be this. Rely on the power of God, not your own, for the confidence to live the faith in the life of the world. That's the context for Paul's statement in the lesson today, so we are always confident. Paul is witnessing to the fact that there is such a thing as, as confidence, a people of confidence. The church is a people of confidence. St. Mark's is a people of confidence. And fathers can be people of confidence. In the Bible, there are astounding stories, especially in the Old Testament, but also in the New, of people with great confidence. I'm thinking of Abraham, for example, who obeyed God in taking his son Isaac out and was willing to sacrifice him, trusting in confidence that God would open the right door for him. Or I'm thinking of David, uh, who stood before Goliath with nothing more than a slingshot. Or Deborah, back in the book of Judges, who outdoes all the men of Israel in her day in showing confidence. Look at St. Paul, who shared the love, the grace of his Lord Jesus Christ after he had been an opposer of, of Jesus in the Christian movement at one time. Paul's courage, Paul's confidence had behind it the example and the action of God in Christ. This Jesus, who was himself the supreme example of confidence. Our Lord's confidence took him from uh, Galilee to Golgotha, where he gave his life and where he then rose from the, the grave there in Jerusalem on the third day. And that brings us close to him as we trust him for the power to make us confident, courageous people of faith. I tell you that gospel, I tell you that good news today and proclaim God's power for you with the appeal that you take hold, take hold of God's gift of confidence and use it. Confidence comes from conviction. Confidence is a sign of commitment. Confidence comes when we rely on our Heavenly Father, the Father we all can count on. Confidence comes when we commune with our Lord Jesus, as we're going to do in a few moments. St. Paul writes, so we are always confident. And note here that Paul doesn't say that I am always confident. He says, we are always confident. And that plural we is more than incidental. It's, it's more than an editorial we. For confidence is learned. Children learn confidence when they have a good father and a good mother. Baptized into Christ, being made a member of his people uh, gives us the opportunity to teach each other confidence. That will be a part of the Bible school this week as children learn what it's like to be on a, an island after they've been shipwrecked. St. Paul, again, can be a wonderful example of confidence. Remember how he was shipwrecked in reality and how he was in prison, beaten, stoned, and how he spent sleepless nights, how he was homeless, how he was hungry and cold. And we'll hear about that next Sunday in the Second Corinthians lesson that uh, may or may not be read, but that's the appointed lesson for next Sunday in Paul's profile in courage. Paul's laying down his life for the gospel 
is a powerful, confident example for all of us to follow. And in our day, we likewise can share with each other examples of confidence in our day-to-day -day living. Fathers and grandfathers and other father figures who model the godly life for their children and who come regularly to worship, to serve, to give, to love, and not just on Father's Day, although we're glad you're here today. Mothers who hold their heads high when their children go astray. Children who are experiencing a breaking or a broken home. And widows and widowers who come back here to this sanctuary bravely and courageously and confidently after the death of a spouse. All of us, of course, have in common the final test of confidence, and we call that final test death. The immediate setting of our 2 Corinthians text is death. Paul speaks of it, of it in the uh, spirit of courage which God provides. It's a, a deep homesickness that Paul feels, wanting to be at home with the Lord, meaning he wants to go on and be in heaven rather than to be at home in his earthly body. Paul knew that the harvest time was coming, and he was confidently ready. He says, so we are always confident. Yes, we do have confidence, and we would rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So whether we are at home or away, we make it our aim to please him. Such confidence of faith. Where do we find it if our attention is only on the things of this world, things that do not last? On this Father's Day, what are you teaching your children? What kind of a father are you? The story is told of a teenager who had been arrested, and he was to go before a judge. And as he sat there in the courtroom, his pastor appeared, and he took a seat near the son, and he looked around, and after a moment, he said to the boy, where's your father? And the boy said, well, he's not here today. He's busy down at the office, so he sent his attorney. Aren't you a little bit disappointed your dad's not here today? The pastor asked the boy. No, nah, in a case like this, who needs a father? I need an attorney. <laughs> well, fathers, how about you? Your child does need you. Being a father is scary, and so is motherhood, and so facing death is even more so. Others can worry us. Health issues can be terrifying for us. National and world events that are happening all too quickly are so disturbing as they give us a faith, faceless kind of threat. And so life and death call for courage and confidence. And it is just this marvelous and gracious gift of confidence that God in Christ has for all his people. We have a savior named Jesus, and our Lord suffered, died, and rose on the third day and in order that we might have the confidence that he has to give. You and I are included, so let us always be confident. I began this sermon by telling you that you were good for nothing, and of course that's not true. We are all children of the Heavenly Father. We are brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ. We are all uh, children of the Heavenly Father and of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so, once again, finally, let us always be confident. Amen.